Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net and today I'm going to be talking to you about astral projection and whether or not it's real. Alright, so before I get into the topic of the realness or unrealness of astral projection, um, basically I'll give you a little bit of my background. Alright, so when I first started getting sleep paralysis and um, having astral projection experiences, I was 13. Um, the first time was a really tumultuous time because I didn't even know what it was. I just thought something paranormal was happening. Basically, I had stayed the night over at my mom's house and I was up late to begin with and I had school the next morning. And I woke up in the middle of the night, it was like 2 a.m. and I was lamenting the fact that I was still awake. And my mom and I, because I didn't have a bed at her house, we were like sharing her double bed. And I was on the side of the bed with the alarm clock and she was on the other side. And I was facing the alarm clock away from her. And it was like 2 something in the morning. I was just looking at this alarm clock and thinking. And then all of a sudden from behind me, my mom starts tickling me under my arms like she would have when I was like a little kid and you know I was kinda out of it so I was like mom stop you know I thought it was weird but it didn't strike me as how odd it actually was like it was totally out of character for my mom to do and so you know basically I was telling her stop I, I need to go to bed and then the tickling eventually became a much tighter sensation where that tickling become became more and more pressure and more and more pressure just in under my armpits to where it felt like somebody was literally jamming two metal rods into my underarms and as the sensation got tighter the less and less I could move and I, I was terrified I didn't know what to do and I was trying to scream and I couldn't scream and I was trying to move and I couldn't move and it was like that for quite some time it was like that for about two minutes and my mind was racing and I just thought there's some creature back behind me that's doing this to me and I can't get away like I, I felt like I was being possessed or haunted or something but I eventually snapped out of it and I immediately turned over and I woke up my mom I was like mom were you just tickling me under my armpits and she said no and, and I told her the whole situation she's like oh it sounded like you were having a heart attack or something I was like no that was real that was 100 percent real like it, it felt too real to not be real and aside from that, I was looking at the alarm clock the whole time, and the alarm clock was reading the same time. I was seeing everything just as it was in reality, and this thing was actually happening to me. So that was my first experience of very, very many. I have probably had sleep paralysis, I don't know, I'm going to throw out a number, like a hundred times before, and about a quarter of those, no, probably more than that, probably more like half, have resulted in actual out-of-body experiences or astral projection experiences. You know, probably actually more. That's probably a low estimate because it's happened to me more times than I can remember back to. And I always consider those types of experiences to be valuable kinds of experiences. Now, occasionally, I will have something negative happen like that where there's something like creepy or paranormal or I'll get attacked by an entity that has happened for, to me before but overall the potential for the experience to go very well is completely worth it to me because I get to have this method of being able to explore a world that feels real and is consistent unto itself and to be able to do that without the limitations of the human body so being able to walk through walls being able to levitate or fly being able to go places that I wouldn't normally be able to go just deciding that I want to go to a place and immediately being there like these types of things like in a world that feels as real as reality and is consistent in the same way as reality only I have a lot more in a sense freedom uh, from physicality now when I was younger I really valued being seen as a rational person that didn't buy into superstitions that much even though I still had an interest in like the surreal and like the paranormal I always wanted to approach those kind of topics like with a, a rational person's mind because I didn't want to be seen as weird or out there or woo woo so during the experiences of astral projection I would definitely get a clear sense that oh my gosh this is actually happening 
Whereas when I would, you know, snap out of the situation, I would immediately convince myself, it's like, oh yeah, that's just an internal phenomenon. Of course it is. It's not a real experience. It's an internal experience. It's purely mind. So I've spoken before on my channel in several videos about my experiences with astral projection and how to actually achieve that state. Um, and one of the questions that I get most often from people is asking me, is astral projection real? Now, the short answer to that is that I don't really know, and honestly, it doesn't matter really all that much to me because the experience to me is valuable, whether it's real or whether it's not real. It still offers me a way to explore a world that feels real and also to be able to explore myself in a different way at the same time. But there are a couple of theories about um, astral projection that I find to be very compelling. So now there's the scientific explanation, which I do believe in, you know, I'm sure that it does work this way. Basically you get sleep paralysis, um, the mind releases uh, certain chemicals, or the brain I should say, releases certain chemicals, GABA and glycine, basically that makes your body uh, go to sleep, that way you don't act out your dreams, you get paralyzed, and then if you wake up while you're paralyzed, that's kind of the gateway to being able to have an out-of-body experience, and it's, you know, you're basically seeing dream time things overlaid onto reality. So that in itself, I think, is a compelling argument. So it is a potential that it is just an inside-the-mind phenomenon. That said, there is another um, explanation for it that I also find very compelling. So this one is a bit more metaphysical. So basically the idea is that we are basically multi-dimensional beings and we have these different dimensional aspects um, sort of overlaid one on top of another and each of those dimensional aspects has a another dimensional aspect that is like our reality but maybe a slight bit different. Basically it's me as a being having these multiple dimensions of myself that are all connected together but kind of laid over top of one another and then the realities that those aspects are in are also laid over top of one another. So the idea is that when you're in that sleep paralysis mode and you often hear this radio fuzz kind of sound is that you basically change frequencies and instead of tuning into your third dimensional aspect you're tuning into another dimensional aspect of yourself that exists in another dimensional aspect of this reality. And so when you're having an out-of-body experience, you're not really going out of body, you're simply tuning in to a different part of yourself. And this really jibes with my experiences because whenever I get up, I'm always in my bed in sleep paralysis and then I get up, I'm immediately in my room around me. My room looks identical or nearly identical. Sometimes I'll even end up on the floor next to my bed and I can see actually up underneath my bed and it, it feels very real seems very real and then I can leave the vicinity of my room and I can go out my house and I can go out onto my street and then eventually I can go out into the greater world and the, usually the further I travel away from my home the more different things start to become but there's still a, a similarity to it and there's still a consistency to everything and so it would make sense to me if there are these other dimensional realities that perhaps it is me just tuning my awareness into these other dimensional realities. Now as compelling as both of these theories are, ultimately no one can ever really know if what they're experiencing is real or not, simply because the term real is loaded with a lot of ideas and human beings have a blind spot for determining what's actually real or what isn't. In fact, having experienced astral projection and having it be so very similar to reality in terms of feelings of realness and consistency, it hasn't made me believe in astral projection more per se as a real phenomenon. It simply made me question what real is in the first place. Because if I look around my consensus reality here that everybody is supposedly experiencing the same reality, you know, ultimately, there's nothing about this experience that's so fundamentally different from my astral projection experience. And yet I can recognize that my astral projection experience might simply be a hallucination, 
might simply be something purely in the mind. So potentially looking around at this reality, you know, it feels real and it's consistent the same way, yet it might not be real in and of itself. You know, because dream reality, we assume that that's not real because there's a lot of inconsistencies there. But at the same time, does that make a dream not real because it doesn't have consistency? So if we're going to ask the question of whether or not astral projection is real, we really have to understand what qualities actually constitute realness versus unrealness. And if we look, we can really think of realness in terms of just an assumption that we make about this reality based on the fact that it is the reality that we have been experiencing longest that it is consistent unto itself like if you look away you know things don't really change you know unless you know there's some reason for it to change that's logical or if it just has a general real feeling like i think those are the three assumptions that we base uh the idea that this reality is real you know whereas if we look at astral projection there is an assumption that oh there's no other realities out there so of course it's not a real thing so even if it feels real it has consistency and you know generally matches all of our other criteria for realness we know that it's not real so it must not be real so there's a lot of kind of uh, almost like lazy thinking when it comes to this topic you know, and a lot of assumptions being bandied about about what realness and unrealness are. And then some people might also cite lack of scientific evidence for why they believe that astral projection isn't real. But if we look, there's the same degree of no scientific evidence that proves that this reality is real. Because ultimately there's no real way to get outside of this system from a higher vantage point to actually experience what's real and what's not. So it could very well be that human beings came up with the concept of realness and unrealness when those aren't even actual things, but just human concepts to overlay onto things. Perhaps everything is real and perhaps nothing is real, and perhaps realness isn't even um, a valid framework to place over top of things, and it's just the way our limited human intellects work. So relative to the question of whether or not astral projection is real, the only honest answer to give is, I don't know. But ultimately, it's something that I don't really care about that much, because realness, uh, the lack of realness wouldn't mean that it's not valuable to me, because ultimately, I get to have a lot of novel experiences and I get to learn new things about myself and I feel like I get to be a little bit privy to a phenomenon that a lot of people are not privy to. So it, to me it is a great privilege to be able to have those types of experiences. But one thing that is for certain is that astral projection is phenomenologically real, meaning that it is an experienceable phenomenon. So if somebody wants to experience what astral projection is like, it can be experienced and it does feel real and it is consistent unto itself. So in the practical sense, it is just like going about in a reality where you don't, are not bound by the physical laws. And so, you know, if you want to fly or if you want to walk through walls or if you want to you know, travel someplace really, really fast or go to places that you've never been before, you know, astral projection is really the cheapest way to travel. But the main takeaway here is not to put too much stock into labels like real and unreal because ultimately as human beings, we have a very limited ability in terms of knowing what's real and unreal in the first place. We're always in this place of perpetual innocence that's masked over by so many illusions of knowing. But when we actually start to embrace the fact that we don't know, things become a lot more open to us. And that's when the world starts to get magical again, much in the same way like when you were a child, when you didn't know as much and you were experiencing something for the first time and there was that sense of magic and wonder. Well, that magic and wonder never quite goes away because we never actually move away from innocence. We never know anything at all for certain. We just begin to think that we do. 
And so if we can let go of the idea of things being absolutely empirically real versus absolutely empirically unreal, then we can start to be a little bit more open-minded. And astral projection is one of those ways um, that if you learn how to do it, it will open your mind up to considering that maybe my perceptions of things aren't exactly the way I think they are. Maybe things aren't exactly this way or that way. Anyway, that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave me a comment down below. Um, also, I wanted to uh, th say thank you again to my patrons. Thank you for making this all possible. Um, and that's all I have for you for now. And until next time, keep becoming more you.